we know everybody we're gonna have a fun little one today because we're gonna be changing a brake pressure sensor on our cat loader so a little bit about how we came to replacing this sensor I've been having issues here for a couple of weeks where the brake pressure warning would come on in the cab Sometimes it would stay on for a while, sometimes it would go off, sometimes it would throw the kill light, kill the engine. And it just got to where it was becoming a little more frequent, so I called the service department at CAT. Always easy to work with. Always easy to work with. So the first thought that we had was the accumulators. Flip you around. It's little black things here behind me. There's two of them. Those are the accumulators. And they got a gas pressure in them so that you still have braking and whatever if the engine dies. That's what that's used for. So that's what we first thought. So we had me run through some preliminary tests just to see. So the test we did was we'd let it run for a couple minutes, shut it off, turn it back on, just the key, and you push the brake. If the light is on immediately after you turn the key back on, that could be a valve being bad, which is down in here. And if you push it once and the light comes on, you got bad accumulators. Well, it wasn't consistent. We ran the test multiple times and it was not consistent. Sometimes it took five presses to make anything happen. Sometimes it was on right away. Sometimes it just took the once. So that led us to believe that the sensor was what was bad, which is good. It's an easy thing to start with. And honestly, that's what they would be doing first anyway, is replacing that and then go with the accumulator. So if you can look, yeah, I'll flip you around here. So this, this is what we're after right here, that valve body. And we got our sensor right here, right back here. And we got to replace that bad boy. But the lines, they run out of that. They run up in here, run up into the accumulators, and then go to the front. So... This isn't that big of a deal. It's not all that hard, but it's a very expensive part. I think it's like 200 some bucks. But realistically speaking, if we had to get both those accumulators, that would probably be up over $200. Plus you'd have to have them come down because they don't ship them filled anymore. So they got to come over and pump the gas into them or nitrogen or whatever it is. I think it's like a dry nitrogen or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but at least this, we can do ourselves. If this fixes it, great. If it doesn't, then we'll worry about other stuff from there. But this is fairly simple. And I got to tip my hat to Cap because they are always super easy to work with. Service department's always easy to work with. And this stuff isn't horrible to work on. I know that lift pump on the other side, transfer pump, whatever you want to call it, that was kind of a pain just because of the lines that are in the back, but it's not all that bad because you can take these side panels off. And once you do that, you can climb up over the tire and get your arm back in behind there, and it's not all that bad at all. But enough of me rambling. Let's go ahead and start pulling this thing apart and show you all what I'm doing. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm going to spray some brake cleaner in here. Just so I can clean that up a little bit because I don't want anything to get in that little hole once I pull this out. Then the next order of business is to follow the cable and get it unhooked. And you can see, if you pull this out of the package, you can see how that's in there, how it threads in. You find a wrench that's going to fit it. And you can also see what kind of plug it has and what kind of release it has so you don't have to go in there guessing and breaking something because you can't really see it from where we were standing, could you? So you can see that I found the plug and I moved it over to where we could see it a little better. Sprayed it off with some brake cleaner because it was covered in some oil and some dirt and grease. So I'm going to grab a rag, wipe that clean, and then we'll go ahead and pull that apart and then work on taking the sensor out. So you can see on the top piece that goes to the sensor, you get a little push button, which you push that down and it lowers your little catch in there, your little hook. So to slip out of this bottom piece. Now you can use a screwdriver, you can use a hook, you can use your fingers, whatever's easiest. 
But keep in mind, it's probably got some oil and everything else in there, so it might not come out the easiest. Just keep working with it and try not to break anything. Just like that. You see, we got some oil in there. So now we got that unhooked, we can go ahead and start working on getting the sensor itself out of the housing. So you can see, looking at the new sensor, what I was talking about, you see that hook right there? You gotta push that button down to get that to release. Next thing, is you can see that that is set up to put a wrench on. You can see how it's threaded, see which way it threads in. And then you find a wrench that's gonna go on there, fit it good. In this case, we've got a 15 16 So we're gonna go over here and start working that out. So hopefully you guys can see a little bit of what we're working on. Get the wrench on there. It's never really a good spot with all the hydraulic lines and everything else around here. But it don't take much. Once you get it loose, then you can start taking it out by hand. Well, you can see, got the old one out. And we got to put an O-ring on the new one, which I expected. I'm surprised they didn't send me one. But one thing to be sure of, too, when you're pulling this out, is there's going to be some build-up pressure in there. I mean, it's a brake valve, so there's going to be some uh, build-up pressure. Don't worry about it. And once you pull it out, it's going to squirt a little bit of hydraulic fluid at you. And then after that, everything's just good to go. So nothing to worry about. It's not just going to leak, 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 leak. It's just going to have that short burst and be done. But I'm going to go put a no ring on this guy and then we'll start putting it back on. Now we got the O ring on. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go in here and we're going to hand thread this bad boy on there. And then we'll run the wires. Back, hook them up and we'll cinch this down with a wrench and we'll call her good. Okay. That was nice and easy threading it in. Just make sure you keep moving that wire around so it can keep rotating, not bind up. You don't want to break any wires. So just keep doing this to get it threaded in there as hand tight as you can get it. I'll run the wires back around the same way that you took them out. There we go. And we'll take the wires, plug them into the pigtail, just like that till it clicks, make sure it's in there. And then we'll take our wrench Try to cinch it up best we can. There we go. Now, with cinching this up, you can see there's not a lot of room there with all the hoses and everything else. But you're not trying to get it overly tight. You just want to get it to where that O-ring is going to seat in there properly and it's not going to leak. That's pretty much it, the idea behind it. But we got everything hooked up. Everything ran like it's supposed to. So I reckon the next step is to start it and... See if we didn't screw something up. Okay. There we go. Well, we'll let it run for just a little bit here. There you go, that's normal.
Good. So I pushed the brake about four or five times and then it brought on the warning which is what it's supposed to do bleeds down the brake pressure so i think we're golden it didn't stay on when we turned it on again it didn't do it on the first push so by george i think we got it so i hope you guys enjoyed this i know it wasn't a very interesting video or a very fun video but either way i enjoy making these things and i enjoy when you guys watch them so hopefully y'all enjoyed it and as always I thank you all for watching.